my heart. It breaks my heart to see drug dealers going around the road and selling crack cocaine and heroin simply because they know that that person's addicted, taking advantage of their addiction so that they can make money. I think of all the pimps that are taking advantage of these, these women on the streets that were, were molested at a young age and now addicted to, to, to certain drugs. I, I met a prostitute on the corner one day and my heart was just crushed. Very pretty looking woman. I've seen her about three years ago. She looked so different than she does today. I don't know how she got on the streets. Maybe it was her bad choices. I don't know all the details. Some people have no sympathy. But I saw this individual and she was out of her mind. And one day I was sleeping in my apartment building which is uh, near that corner, near that intersection. And I heard this cry that I never heard before. And she kept crying and crying, yelling and screaming. I got out of my bed and I went and I, and I looked out the window and I saw that it was the same young lady that I spoke to three years ago. The only difference is she, she gained weight. She looked like she aged 20 years simply because of the stress and the drug addictions. I went over to her and I tried to talk with her. She couldn't look me in the eyes. She couldn't hold a conversation. She couldn't respond to anything I was saying. She was so high and strung off of drugs and messed up. And I looked her in the eyes and I said, do you know that God loves you? Do you know that your life ha has purpose? And I kept speaking that she was as cold as a rock. And I kept speaking love into her. I keep told her, keep telling her, listen, there's hope for your life. And eventually, she didn't look me in the eyes. A tear fell down out of her eye. And I knew that I was reaching her heart and reaching her emotions. I knew that there was a young child within that old woman. And I knew that she didn't want to live that life. And I, she started to shake her head back and forth every time I told her that, that you have hope. She couldn't believe that somebody loved her. She couldn't believe that they, she had a second chance. But I continued to tell her that Jesus died for you. That that means you have a second chance. God loves you. That means you have a second chance. Someone cared enough to give their innocent life just so that you could live again. Despite the fact that you're a sinner. She couldn't accept it. Because she lives in a world just like I live in the same world of people that don't care. People that take advantage of the innocent. People that take advantage of the vulnerable. People that the moment they have an opportunity, an edge over you, they try to lord it over you and rule over you and oppress you and hold you down. My friends, this is what happens when we forsake the laws of God. This is what happens when we forget the example of Jesus Christ. This is what happens to a godless society that says there's no such thing as absolute truth. Because if you don't believe in truth, then you don't believe that there is any standard that we should live by as a human race. If you don't believe in absolutes, no wonder we continue to live by our own greed and lusts. If you don't believe that there's a right and a wrong, then these kind of things will never change. But yet, deep inside of our hearts, we know that there's a cry and a yearning for someone to care. We know that there's a cry and a yearning for someone to reach out. We know that there's a cry and a yearning for a second chance. And I'm here to tell you today that although this life sucks, although people are taking advantage of you, although that you've made so many mistakes and you feel like there's no second chance, I'm here to tell you today that there is a God who loves you. There is a God who cares for you. There's a God whose second name is love. Rather, his first name is love. Or rather, his name is equivalent to love because he himself said, I am love. There's a God who identifies as love. There's a God who proved that he is love. There's a God who reaches out and extends forgiveness to the uttermost, to the worst criminal, to the most broken individual, to the person that's strong and high on, on the worst drug, for the person that took advantage, because the truth is we all have taken advantage of somebody at some point in our lives. We have all 
considered ourselves better than our fellow man. I know so many people that go to University of Toronto and the moment that they get their degree, they act as though they're better than their fellow man. In fact, that sense of pride comes on every person that somehow goes to a secondary uh, school. They feel that they're smarter and they're better. And maybe they are smarter, but that doesn't mean we're, that they're better. I've met people that have no education that are more pure in heart than the most scholarly man with a PhD. And so it's not always the person in a higher position that's better than the person that's in a lower position. In fact, the persons that we need the most are those in the lower positions rather than the higher positions. The first to go in any company is a CEO, but they keep the entry level. Consultants, why? Because it's necessary. This world would not run without those in low positions. This world would fall apart without our janitors, without our garbage men. This world would fall apart without women. Think of all the women today that are being oppressed and violated and abused, objectified on television and pornography, be considered a sex object and being used as such. And some of you women fall into that bracket and that criteria and you feel that you need to do this in order to survive. Listen, I understand because when you have a, an oppressive culture where men don't consider women at the same value level as, a, uh, as, as themselves, I can understand why women will use their bodies to control men. And that's exactly why men, women do what they do. Because there's no logical reason, I thought about it, what would be the logical reason for a woman to walk around half naked? What would be the logical reason for women to walk around in, in panties and bra tops? I'm gonna tell you what the reason is. It's because women that have felt that they need the upper hand want to control men and control their vision. Our world, in fact, is controlling you. Our world is very vision oriented. Everyone's driving a car, that means you have to work about 10 times more with your lenses than you used to do in the past. In order for you to get around and drive a car, that means you have to be more focused with your eyes than you used to in the past. Now we have smartphones. We are now more vision oriented because everything revolves around what's on our phone. And so that means that someone is controlling your eyes. And if a woman can wear certain things and get the attention of a man, we know it's for control reasons. Number one is to get the attention of a man to say, I'm attractive, come after me. Number two, it's to have the upper hand over a man. If you can cause a man to drool, if you can cause a man to beg, then that means that you are stepping into a place of control. A woman has every right to wear whatever the hell she wants. It is not to gain a man's attention. What is it for? It is for herself. So you have no dignity, is it what you're saying? It's true. I, I, think, I think women, I don't know you, I don't know you, but you're wearing a bra top, and I think that's for your husband. But no, 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 you can do whatever you want. And you're right. Women can do whatever they want. It doesn't make it right. Now, if you want to walk around naked, you can do that. It's called lewdness. There's a law against that. So while you think it's right, if I were to go walk around with my, my, my penis hanging out, you would not say that that's right. If, you were, if, I were to walk around, if a woman were to walk around with her breasts hanging around in front of her kids, you would say that that's woman's a, a pervert. Would you not agree? Wait, with her breasts in her hand? Yes, breasts are not meant to be exposed publicly in front of little kids. Actually, actually that's called pornography. It's not illegal in, in Canada to... Well, it should be. ...for a woman to walk around topless. If a man is able to walk around topless, a woman should be able to, too. I'm going to tell you the that difference. Her, right, that is her right. Okay, I am a health science student, okay? It is just the same amount of tissue. We just have a little bit more men have sexualized a man's or sorry a woman's breast men have men sexualized have, women's breasts men have sexualized women you are saying that a woman is doing this for men 
I think she is. Women, women do not do this for men. Women do this for themselves, to empower themselves. Women walk around naked to empower themselves? You're saying that I'm walking around naked. No, I never said you. No. We're talking a theoretical. I don't even want to judge you. I don't know what. I don't know you. I know you're wearing a sort of a broad top. But but listen, I'm not here to judge you specifically. I was talking about the fact that the reason why many you do not see women walking around topless. You do not. No, I, I don't. I see them. I see many dressing half naked. And that's her choice. It is. It is her choice. Okay. It's a bad choice. No. No, it's not. I get hot as shit. I'm hot as shit right now. Your language is a bad choice, too. <laughs> okay. You don't have to swear. You don't have to swear. It's, it's, it's a bad choice of words, right? You can do whatever you want to do, but it doesn't mean everything you do is right. Like, I mean, just, just, look, just look at this for a second. So you, look, you look down on me because I used a curse word. I don't look down on you. I just think it was a bad choice of words, exactly what I just said. And I think, I think you don't have to, in front of all these people, use curse words, and especially that I'm a preacher okay. of righteousness. I, I apologize to, I apologize that I offended you for using that language, but I am entitled to free speech. You are. You are. Okay. So you swear all you want. Okay, I'm not going to, but I'm just saying that it is unfair for you to say that any woman is walking around, walking around in a crop top is her provoking a man trying to gain a man's control. But why is it unfair for me to have an opinion while you have an opinion and you think it's okay to you for you to swear and do whatever you want? I'm, a, I'm allowed to have an opinion. I think it's control. I think it's controlling. I think when a woman has, in, in this society, listen to me, you, I'm, of course I'm preaching, I'm preaching to the world, and, and I'm giving you the mic too, but, but listen, I'll, I'll let you speak, listen to me speak, listen, listen, I don't think anybody is going to walk around half naked in a, in a, in a, in, a in, in say the RBC Bank or TD Bank or Scotia Bank, why it's inappropriate, you need to come to work with business attire, you wouldn't become a teacher and walk in front of kids half naked, you'd be fired, so, Every, you can't walk in a mall half naked either because they would that kick is, you out. That is complete. No, no. They wouldn't kick you okay. out. A mall would not kick a woman out for wearing shorts. For wearing shorts and a crop top. But if a woman wore that to work, 100%. Because a workplace is a professional place. Being out in public does not mean that you need to be as professional as you do when you present yourself at work. Okay, so professional. Yeah, sure, you can do whatever you want. But listen to me. The reason why it's professional not to dress lewd is because it's called lewd. It's unprofessional. And I would rather uh, teach young women to be professional and dignified and have respect for themselves rather than to walk unprofessional and undignified and lewd. Okay, let me, let me ask you this. Do you think that I am unprofessional because of the way that I am dressed today? Do you want to make it personal? I don't want to make it personal I'm, with you. No, I'm, I'm, Do you want to make it personal? I will not be offended. Do you really want me to go there? I, I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. Okay, you said you said that women don't dress like the way that they do to get our attention. No. Well, psychologically, everybody does something to get other somebody else's attention. No, so you're lying. Okay, that's, that's his opinion. But but look, the reason why okay the reason the reason why the reason why that you go to work dressing a certain way. You want to you want to be in this country? And, and 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 first of all, I'd like to just uh, quickly congratulate everybody in the Toronto vicinity for taking part of these conversations. Where we, we put up a gospel booth called uh, Free Information About Jesus. We're from a ministry called Christ Forgiveness Ministries. We've been doing it for about eight years here. And if you notice, we're engaging the Toronto culture, bringing people together. And so I'd just like to, I'd like all of you to give yourselves a hand for engaging in this wonderful, come on, give yourselves a hand for being in this conversation. If you don't want to, that's great. So anyway, listen, you have a question? No, 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 no question. Okay, so back to the lady's question. Look, I was simply saying that women dress the way they do for control reasons, just like men do. The reason why we dress professionally is because we do dress for others. We're not on this planet for ourselves. We always are in relationships. So yes, you have the right to do whatever you want to do, but it doesn't make it right. How do they evolve? It's like this. It's a different society now. From the 70s and the 1800s and the 1960s. Well, but look, look what's happening today. I, I, I just actually looked on the internet and I was looking at how nurses used to dress in the 1960s. Nurses in the 1960s were all women. They had a head covering, like our Muslim sisters, whoever they are, and they had skirts on because in those days there was such thing as called gender, gender distinction. Women dress different from men. You can see traces of it on the bathrooms. If you go to the bathrooms, even in 2018, you see a woman wearing a long skirt 
and men wearing pants. Where do you get that from? From the idea of the Bible that men and women should dress differently. Nowadays, we have what they call gender inclusion or gender uh, neutrality or we have uh, the blurring of the lines. And we're so blurred that today we're now teaching people that there's 32 genders or even more that there's no such thing as, but the thing is, if you were, if you were to cross the border and get a passport, you're, you have to identify as a male and a female, regardless of whatever. There's no such thing as saying, I'm a, I'm a monkey or an, I'm, I can choose whatever I want to do. If you're, if you're being followed by the police and they write up a report, they say a male is on the run or a female is on the run. There's no such thing as 32 genders. So regardless of what they try to teach you, it's not true. You can, it would be very difficult for somebody to catch a criminal saying, well, you know what, we're, 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 we're chasing after uh, somebody with long hair, claims to be an alligator. Um, they don't actually look like an alligator, but that's their gender. And um, they're an alligator, half alien alligator. It, it, it's very difficult, my friends. It's not gonna work out. There's a male and a female. And why am I going there? Hold on a second. The reason why is because I looked on the internet and I looked at the 1990s of how nurses dressed. And now it was uh, un uh, multisexual, which is fine. Two genders, male and female, were working as nurses. The women stopped wearing skirts and they started wearing pants. And now we have scrubs uh, today. They threw away the head covering. Now, that's one example of changing norms. We've, we've, as a culture, gone away from the idea that men and women are different. And we tried to blur them and call them the same. Let's look at uh, what happened in the in, in the 60s with the, or even a little before with the burning of the bras. Now I don't know about you, but I know a lot of women today are walking around without bras. But it's but you know what? The reason why they wear bras is because it's very difficult to move fast with it just hanging over like that. You know, you need something to hold up yourself. Now you don't have. I got it. You don't have to wear a bra. You can do whatever you want. But in the past, people used to wear bras because it, it allowed them to move a little better, number one. Number two, it covered up certain uh, body parts that were considered sexual, like the nipples. Today, we have a lot of young ladies not wearing bras. I don't know what they're thinking. They want people to see their nipples. And you have to ask yourselves why. What was the difference between the 60s going up to now? There once was a point where even in churches they, they said women should wear skirts and men should wear pants. Now it really doesn't matter. If you go to the stores and, and see what women wear today, for the majority of the stores it's all skin tight. It's very fitted. And long skirts are kind of, I don't know if they're coming back in style, I don't know. But it, it, if, if, it, if it's being sold, it's a style, it's a fad for about a month or two. But for the most part, when we think of women's clothing, it's tight, it's explicit, and it's sexual. I challenge you to look at, uh, many years ago, I looked at Parasuco's website, I looked at Guess of Marciano's website, I looked at H&M's website, and I looked at the theory behind the fashions that they made. And you know what it said? It said that these fashions were made to appeal to the sexual nature and to, become, to be sensual. I, I made a video on it and I recorded it back in, in 2006. This is the fashion designers, most of them, who, who, most of them or many of them are LGBT community men, which are, are exp go along Church Street and you see half naked people all over their community. It seems, I'm not saying all LGBT What about the feminist movement? Who was that started by? Praise the Lord. I'm not saying that every member of the LGBT community is over-sexualized, but I can say it's a very large part of the LGBT community and everybody knows that. It's a sexualized community where sex is pushed. In fact, the whole agenda is who you can have sex with. I mean, listen, you don't see heterosexual people just talking about sex all day. And if you go to a heterosexual community, which is the majority, you don't see sex all over. And if you do, it's, it's illegal. It's nothing new. So here's what I'm telling you. The people that are making your fashions are over-sexualized. They, on their own statements, say that the fashions are meant to be sexualized. And you're wearing that. So what is the problem with our culture? I'll tell you what it is. The reason why things are the way it is today is because we've gone astray 
from the norms of the Word of God and what is right. And we've embraced the teaching that there is no such thing as right. It's subjective to how you feel. But you don't even believe that on the inside. Why? Because if I was to rape you, rob you, kill you, you would want to call the police, which means that you expect people to believe in right and wrong, but you're teaching, or rather our teachers are teaching you that there's no such thing. So there's something wrong. What's wrong is this. We've gone astray from the things of God, and that's why things are falling apart. You had a question? Come here, please, because my, my court is... A lot of tribal communities where women are bare chested, they are they expose themselves. They have children. They have a very good uh, community that they uh, survive in. So um, they have their own religion. If they're following their religion. You're telling me that God does not exist for them. So instead of changing the way children are brought up in school, in their homes, to change their viewpoints to how to see women, you think women should continue being perverts and women should continue changing themselves for men. For you, I think. I, I think that, I think that, hold, hold on. No, I'm not going to start wearing makeup and all that stuff like that because it's made up. It's not real. But, but listen to me. All those cultures, I'm going to answer your question. I'm going to answer your question. Can I answer your question? Look, people paint their face and do whatever they want to do. Okay, hold on. I just looked at your chest. No, I didn't. I don't even want to look there. Trust me. Trust me. I don't want to look there. But I'm not here trying to put you down either. So listen, don't, don't accuse me falsely because all liars will enter into the kingdom. Why would I look at your chest? Seriously. I'm not, I'm not even attracted to you. Okay. So I'm not looking at your chest. Take that back. Why, why, why are you trying to accuse me falsely? I'm not. Okay. You know what? Listen to me. Look, I'll answer your questions. Just because you see tribal people doing something way out in Africa, I want to ask you something. Do you... Do, Africa, okay, where? Okay, other communities, Latin America, South America, Philippines, wherever. And you got ancient tribal people that are walking around half naked. Have you ever been there? I have. Have you been there? I have. You seem, you've, you're aware. Okay, I'm aware too, so we're on the same level. I haven't been there. You're a teacher. Okay, I'm a pastor. Okay. What's your, what's your educational level since you wanted to go there? Bachelor's of Art. I did my Bachelor's of Education. I've traveled around the world. I'm a teacher. I teach in Toronto. Great. I've traveled around the world. I have a Master's of Religious Studies, and so I guess I'm smarter than you. You don't have to have an education, first of all, to be smart. To be aware, you need to go read, meet people, interact with the world. That's how you get smart. Not just by reading one or two things or, you know, reading it or getting a bachelor's degree. There are a lot of people who have achieved who are also probably, you know, um, won some kind of prizes just because they are smart, not just because they went to university. I agree, but you're the one who brought up the fact that you're a teacher, not me. I didn't care about that stuff. The only reason why I went there is because you went there. Okay, let me let me answer your question. What kind of show is this? I went there because I went to I wanted to emphasize that it's about how you educate, how you bring up your children, how they should perceive people around you. It's not about you know covering up and suppression. It's about education of respecting one another. If you have a disease where you're being perverted, that means somewhere you are suppressing your sexuality, which should be addressed for you. Not everybody around you needs to change means you need to change in your viewpoint. Okay, so so you're kind of teaching what I was just about talking about was this sense of everybody's truth is subjective to themselves. That's that's kind of what you're saying. See, I can I can sense what you're saying all, all automatically. So it really should no one should really judge me if I rape somebody, right? Because it's subject my morals is subjective. It's completely different. Are you sure? So where's the where's the line? Where's the line of absolutes? And where's the line of, doesn't matter? When it, harms other people. when it harms other people. So whose definition of harm? It doesn't harm me to go rape somebody. It harms you. <laughs> wow. Wow. No, yeah, wow. Because it's not my teaching, it's her teaching. I believe in absolutes. I think rape is wrong. No, I actually believe in the Bible. I think rape is wrong. But she's the one saying morality is subjective. So if it's subjective, I should be able to do whatever I... No, no, okay, rephrase yourself now. So it's been proven again and again in studies that it doesn't matter if you wear a burqa, it doesn't matter if you're in a bikini, it doesn't matter how what your age is. If a person wants to rape, he will find a way to rape. Okay, it's true. Some people have problems on the inside, but it, but you're saying truth is subjective, and I'm saying it's not. And if truth is subjective, subjective, then it doesn't matter what I do. Truth is always one. Sorry. So okay, just make up your mind so that I'm not confused. 
is truth subjective to how I feel or is there absolutes? Yes, which one? Absolutes or subjective? Well, truth, I believe, is one. Is Rape is wrong. Okay, killing somebody is wrong. What you view... Wait, wait, wait. Sorry. Sorry. Truth, uh, uh, truth is wrong or one? What does it mean to be one? Is it is there is there an absolute or or subjective? Well, it's def it's definitely absolute. I mean, there's some things that you cannot. For example, I'm giving examples, right? You cannot rape somebody, you cannot murder somebody, even committing suicide is a very big violent act, right? But I feel like uh, if you have a perversion problem or some kind of suppression. It needs to be addressed subjectively. If subjectively each person is being addressed, we can find a cure to this problem. I, not, now we're back. Now we're back on level level understanding. I agree with her that there is absolute truth. Okay. So we start. We started off. Bro, fix this, man. I'm not saying something. Somebody go to the dollar check store. Check, check. Oh, okay. There you go. Okay. Yeah, God is saying something. He's saying that uh, you need to think about something for a second. So, this is what God is saying here right now. I agree with her that truth is absolute. Okay. The Bible says that Jesus is the truth, and His word is truth. The reason why we teach modesty because in all reality, there, there is. It's a sign. Yeah, it's a sign. There, there is a factor within all of us that either gives us certain impulses and attraction, and that don't. It's normal to have opposite sex attraction. It's normal. That's normal. It's abnormal to have same sex attraction. Whether or not you like what I said or not, it's abnormal. Even many people from the LGBT community claim they wish that they didn't have these inclinations. It's not the norm. Why do I know it's not the norm? Because it doesn't bring forth life. If I were to teach that it's the norm, then if within one generation, people would be believing that that's the norm and we wouldn't have a community. So if there are, if, if we have natural inclinations of attraction, we have to ask ourselves, is this something that we should suppress or accept? We accept it. And if we accept that we have natural inclinations, we, we simply have to guard ourselves in certain ways that, that, uh, that um, protect ourselves from abuse or, or wrong displays of these attractions or these sexual parts of our lives. And then we expose it at other times. And that's why we have laws called lewdness and we have modesty. So the reason why we teach that women should cover themselves is because they have certain sexual hormones that release fair hormones and sexual attraction that triggers a guy, which is natural. And unless they want to be targeted by people all the time and looked at a certain way, which is natural, then they need to cover themselves up. There's such thing as called temptation. How do I know that? Because I'm a man. I have sexual attractions like anybody else. That's why. So, so if you want to teach every kid to walk around naked and everything like that, meanwhile you have, and I'm not saying that that's what you're saying, but it, but it's in some way what you're inferring or implying that we should do. Because you're saying that somebody, for me to t tell tell a woman to dress a certain way that I should actually be telling the man not to have those impulses. But that's not true. He will have those impulses, just like a woman will. So we have to work with what who we are and, and, and cherish our relationships. That's why the Bible says that fornication is wrong, but marriage is right, because it protects the, the sanctity of women and men.